With mental health problems amplified by the stress of the pandemic, Sonora Behavioral Health is bringing awareness to this issue, specifically to the tragedy of suicide. Medical Director for Adult Services, Dr. Aaron Wilson, is here to discuss. Doctor, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Let's start first with the warning signs of suicide. What are those? Yeah, yeah. Typically, you know, with, as far as what we look for in, in mental health for warning signs for, for suicide, we'd be looking at, um, you know, becoming increasingly isolative, pulling away from things that you, you previously enjoyed doing, um, you know, changes in behavior. Uh, you know, obviously some of the, the historic, you know, factors people look at as giving away possessions or just, just things that seem really out of character. Um, you know, I think now more than ever, it's really important that we look at that just because, you know, really we're, it's, it's kind of an isolative time in general. And so, so really being aware and reaching out and, and all that to your loved ones is key. Right. Who, who exactly is at risk of suicide? You know, suicide doesn't really discriminate. It really affects, you know, people of, of you know, both, both and all genders. Uh, you know, it affects different, different ethnicities and different age ranges. And so, you know, unfortunately, it really affects pretty much people across the board. And so there's not really one particular group that um, that we worry about. We, we, we definitely want to make sure that we're, we're looking at everyone, whether it's early on in life, adolescence, even in the late, you know, uh, the elderly and some of the struggles they face. Well, and just like any other, you know, health condition, the earlier you catch it, uh, the better the chances of recovering, better the chances of survival. So what can you do? What should you do if a loved one, a friend, expresses suicidal signs right you know i think i think it's really important that that everyone's aware that you know talking uh, talking about suicide and talking about mental health obviously is is critical and there's there's no studies in fact there's studies that show that if, if you do connect and ask people or ask people you know you care about if they're struggling with suicidal thoughts or, or depression or anxiety um talking about it does not you know increase the likelihood. In fact, it actually drastically decreases it. So I think it's it's having that open dialogue, breaking down that stigma and just, you know, and, and being able to communicate communicate with people when they're when they're struggling. So um, I think it's it's first of all having that open dialogue, you know, taking people seriously when they maybe mention that, you know, they're struggling with depression, they're feeling disconnected, they're feeling hopeless, helpless, overwhelmed. Uh, taking those taking those concerns seriously and asking them if there's anything you can do to help. And then again, that the, the the final step to that is, of course, connecting people with help, or at least trying to connect them with some resources, and and that's and that's a real big part of it. Because a lot of times, when you're when you're shut down, you're overwhelmed and hopeless and helpless, you know, you you lack that that motivation to do to reach out for help yourself. And so, as loved ones, as people that you know, social supports, us helping them, you know, get to that next level is is helpful. It's huge. And, there, you know, people have to know that they're not alone. Of course, they have their friends and their family, but, but there is help out there, right? So what, what can people turn to uh, in their time of need? So when people are struggling, I think, of course, reaching out to, to loved ones is, is, is critical. You know, there are a lot of resources, of course. There's, there's suicide helplines. There are, you know, outpatient providers. There are, you know, there are places uh, like Sonora Behavioral Health and, and hospitals when people are in that acute crisis. And so... There are a lot of levels of care. There are a lot of ways that, that we can help as the, as the mental health professionals. And honestly, you know, when, when people come in, I would say more often than not, you know, they, they, feel, they feel overwhelmed. They feel like there's no way out. And I think part of the key to getting that help is just realizing, you know, looking at things from the outside, getting that perspective and realizing there is a path forward, there is hope. And that's, that's a big part, honestly, of, of what we do as, as mental health professionals. Absolutely. And talk briefly what services are available specifically at Sonora to help those who are in crisis or at risk. Sure. So Sonora offers, you know, a, a few different levels of care. So when folks come in, they can obviously uh, have an assessment. And really during that assessment, it's kind of getting to know, you know, where people are, meet them where they are and what level of care, you know, they may feel is most appropriate. And so they do offer intensive outpatient services. There's a three day a week, a five day a week day program that you can do. Um, if you are, you know, really in crisis and that's not going to be enough for you, you can come into the hospital, um, you know, for, for a stabilization or a kind of a crisis management. And that, that can be anywhere five, seven, you know, 10 days, depending on, you know, what we can do. And really it's, as I mentioned, it's, it's just being able to come in and kind of get out of that current situation so you can see it, get that perspective, 
you know, work with a with a mental health professional, work with a psychiatrist, um, and and really just you know kind of kind of look at things. And and if if medications are, are part of that, of course that's that could be a piece of it. But it's more than that. Really, it's it's just kind of looking at life and how we can plug in, and then of course setting them up with aftercare. So. Of course, the stabilization is a part of it, but then what can we set people up with moving forward when they discharge from the hospital to really set them up to succeed and kind of keep building on that momentum? Yeah, it's all about having a plan. Dr. Aaron Wilson, great information. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Sonora is the leading behavioral health hospital in Tucson. If you want to learn more, visit sonorabehavioral.com or you can call them at 520-469-8700. And stay right where you are. We'll be right back.